My friends, welcome to this tutorial about creating your game with Solaris. Today I'm going to explain maybe the most important view of Solaris Quest Editor, which is the map editor. Because in your project you might have a lot of things, you might have some maps, some music, enemies, sprites, and so on, but you will spend the most a lot of time um, creating maps. So I'm going to explain what is a map and how to modify a map. Um, yeah, the basics. So, a map is, well, it's a scene of your game. It can be, for example, a house or a dungeon or part of a dungeon, for example, just a floor of a dungeon or a region of your outside world. Anything is possible. So, um, by default, when you created your project, uh, a default map was created, and that map is just an empty room like this. So, your map has some properties here in that view. It has a file name, a uh, description, you can put anything here. You can change the size of your map, so instead of 320, by 240 we can make it bigger for example let's make it twice bigger than the initial size okay that's done now it's bigger um, and you have some more information here including the music you can yeah let's choose a let's choose some music here uh, with this button you can listen to that music and a tile set that's important the tile set is like the skin of your map. Uh, it appears in that view and in that view you have all possible patterns that you can use to create tiles in your map. Um, you can uh, pan the view if you click on the middle button of your mouse. That's a very nice trick um, to be faster than uh, going to the scroll bars here. So I will do that all the time. I will try to uh, say it to <laughs> because if I if I say it uh, a lot of time it will be easier for you to remember and yeah so I'm always panning the view with uh, the middle mouse button and also you can zoom in and zoom out with control and the, and the wheel of your mouse like this. It also works in other view for example the tileset view here you can zoom in, zoom out, and pan the view with the middle mouse button. Anyway, um, so a map is basically composed of a list of entities. Um, when we say entity, it can be anything that has some coordinates on the map. For example, that's an entity, and that's more exactly an entity of type tile. Uh, yeah. Um, so you can have tile of any size. Let's let's activate the grid. Show grid. Um, in other software, tiles are always 16 by 16, for example. But here they can have any size. They ca they can even overlap, um, which is not the case for now in this map. But if I create another tile, let's see. Let's put something more. Uh, let's put uh, a table. No, a bed. Let's put a bed here. So you can create a new tile by clicking on the pattern here in the tileset view and just you can put it anywhere you want on the map. And if you want to cancel, you can press escape and it disappears. So here I have this tile, uh, which is uh, 16 by 48. If you can double click it to see its properties. All entities have a layer, a position, and a size and some more stuff def depending on the, on the type of entity. So here I have a lot of tiles here and this one is not a tile, it's an entity of type destination. Uh, if you remember from the first episode, it's the initial place of the hero, for example. If I put it here and if I test my map, I'm here initially. There will be a next tutorial about destinations and teletransporters and also about all of the other types of entities. The other types of entities are here in this toolbar here. 
but we'll mostly focus on tiles in this tutorial. Uh, I was explaining that tiles can overlap, so this bed is actually uh, overlapping the floor tile here. And you, you could, if you want, uh, bring uh, an entity to, to the back, and now it doesn't make any sense, the bed is just under the floor. But it's good to know that you can do that. There are a lot of keyboard shortcuts, T or B, to bring to front and bring to back, for example. Okay. So tiles can have any size. Multiple of eight it is the only constraint. They can overlap and they can also be resized. Um, if you right click and you, you can do resize or just press R, it's faster. R. And here I can resize my floor to any size. Uh, I can also resize my wall here, but only horizontally. This one only vertically. And this one, it just cannot be resized. Uh, so that means that all patterns here have some information about how they can be resized and also whether they are they can be traversed by the hero, for example. I cannot traverse the bed or the wall here, I'm stuck, but I can traverse the floor tile. So all these uh, properties can be defined in the tileset editor, but today we will only focus on the map editor. You will already have a lot of information and there will be another tutorial later about how to create your own tileset or how to modify your tileset. So for now we will just use the existing tiles. Uh, okay, you can select tiles as we already saw with this green rectangle when you click on them. You can do multiple selection with control or shift. Or more efficiently you can press the mouse button, the left mouse button and create a, and draw a selection rectangle and everything in your rectangle will, will be selected. Let's, let's copy paste this room to create another one. So I, well, I'm going too fast here. I selected everything like this and then I kept control pressed and I unselected both the bed and the destination here to just get the walls and the floor and I want to copy paste that. Again I'm using the the middle mouse button the middle button of, of my mouse to pan the view and let's create another room but this one let's say that we want it uh, bigger we want it to occupy the space uh, like of two rooms here. Um, there is a little bit of magic here you can resize actually a full room like this and with the R, R button, and actually the editor uh, uses the repeatability properties of tiles to guess how, to, to understand basically that it's a room and, and it can be resized directly. So that's where, that can work only with uh, simple rectangular rooms. Simple rectangular tiles in general. Maybe it should also work with this uh, carpet here if I if I want to so you, you can also do multiple selection in the tileset editor editor and then if you resize your carpet it works uh, let's try to make it to make something symmetrical here <laughs> I may maybe we'll put the destination here Okay, that's nice. Um, one more important thing, when you create some tiles, you can create several of, of them. Um, let's take, for example, let's put a table here, and let's say we want three seats. 
So I click this pattern here and I will create a tie from this pattern in my map. So normally you would do left click, you select it again, you do it again. Okay, but there is a faster way if I just undo. You can create it with a right click and boom, it automatically create a sec creates a second one. And I created the last one with a left click because I only wanted three seats. Um, and similarly, when you create some ties, if you keep your left your mouse button pressed, you can create. Let's create it here. You can uh, already immediately resize it right after it's created, um, and you can do both uh, techniques at the same time. So you can create and resize with the right button and it will also create a new one. Um, for example, let's create some small berries here, like that. And maybe, maybe something like that. Not very nice, but it was just to explain that when you create a tile, um, if you right click, you can create several tiles uh, successively. And if you keep the mouse button pressed, you can resize them right after that creation. Um, okay. I think that's all I wanted to cover in this episode. Just a recap again a map is a scene of your game. Here it's, we can say it's a big house. Um, it, it could be a dungeon or part of your outside world. Um, and it's composed of a list of entities. Every time we'll talk about entities in Solaris, it means something that is on a map. Tiles are the most common uh, type of entity. That's a tile. But there are also some dynamic types of entities. They are all in this toolbar here, like enemies, uh, non-playing characters, uh, chests, the tail transporters, and so on. We will see them in future tutorials. But tiles are the most basic ones. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it for this chapter. If you have any question, uh, feel free to come on our Discord. We are always happy to help. There is a lot of people um, who who would like, who like to discuss. And that's it for now. See you next time. Bye.